Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. I wanted to get a video out uh, on Christmas Eve right before the holidays just in case. Uh, probably won't do one on Christmas Day, and I don't know about the weekend after that with school being off. So I wanted to get one more video out before the holiday season. going to do it on switch releases with vertical stems, something I'm starting to see in uh, a lot of games I've been watching in college. I'm starting to see it more and more, uh, getting getting those switch releases and then attacking down the field with post dig and post corner or double moves or things like that. So make sure you check out some of our partners. All right, Dome Hats. It's a headwear company I use uh, for play fast football. It's a headwear company I use for the, the school that I'm currently at right now. Custom hats with an online custom hat builder where you can make your own hat. So, you know, you can change the, the style of the hat. You can change the panels, the colors, the eyelets, the button up top, the logo on the front. It's completely customi customizable, which is great because every hat has a story. So why not let Dome help you tell your hat story? All right, Game Strat sideline replay system we use. If you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, check out Game Strat. Baker Sporting Goods. All right, so we get our uniforms from. We get our our spirit pack items from them, our players' items, our coaches' items, shirts like this. We get through uh, Baker Sporting Goods and some of our fan stuff with online team stores. So make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play Football, which is the uh, play design tool that I use. It's digital software that's a more powerful presentation. Takes your program to the next level. Gets your playbook and your game plans to your kids in a different way with the ability to do some different things. So check out Just Play. Difference USA. Ultimate striking machine, we have one that we use in our weight room in the offseason. Work on striking without needing a partner. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. Elbows in, thumbs up, strike, hips, eyes, all the things you need to do to strike. There's different coils that have different tensions on them, so as your kids get stronger or better at striking, you can change the coils out to make it harder to compress the pad in. So all those reps that you need, you can get them in the offseason, get them in your weight room if you're indoors with snow or, or somewhere where it's cold and you can't get outside, you can do it in your weight room, so check out Difference USA. High and Tight, which is a ball security training aid all right, that allows you to get an auditory response, a beep of when you are holding the ball correctly with the proper elbow, forearm, bicep, wrist, split the tip, the ball being held with the right pressure against your chest, all the things you need to do to hold the ball securely. If you do it right, you hear an auditory beep. If you do not hear the beep, you've got the ball or some part of the equation is wrong. Then you uh, you establish that muscle memory that every time I take the ball and I get it right where it belongs and I hear the beat, I now know every time I grab a football, get it just like that and it creates that muscle memory. So ball security is job security, check out high and tight. So some of the games that I've been watching recently, some of the college games I'm starting to see, uh, if it's not necessarily stacked stuff or, or compressed, it's, it's, it's usually compressed, sort of bunched, all right? But I'm starting to see a lot more switch routes coming from, all right, uh, uh, one and two receivers. So I'm starting to see a lot more of these vertical outside stem, vertical inside stem, and I'm starting to see it with like middle. So I'm starting to see vertical inside stem with dig. I'm starting to see vertical outside stem with a push to the post. Whatever you're doing on the backside, all right, you could be shallow cross, you could be doing whatever, but the bottom line is, is you're starting to see more of these things because I think they're very good and effective ways to attack pattern match teams, to attack, you know, attack teams that might, uh, in man situations, that might bracket inside out, I.O., however you want to look at it. Because now what you're going to do is you're going to create situations where you can get your one on a safety. All right, or you can, you know, you can change how you line your guys up to get the matchup you want once you switch the vertical stems. Because if teams are playing usually some type of quarters toolbox or two read palms, if two is out and the corner is going to buy that, when one comes in vertical, that means the safety is going to have to buy that number one. Now you've got your best receiver on a safety. So if you wanted to work that safety within the scheme, you know, and, and, and you knew the coverage you were getting, to me you would run the post there and the dig by the number one there because now you like the matchup that you're getting with your number one on a safety. Most teams don't have the types of safeties that can play a number one. There's a reason they're a safety or an outside nickel or whatever they are. They want to be on twos. They want to be doing certain things. Vertical switch releases with the stems. Now you get the matchup you want, and you can still attack the field vertically. You used to see um, a lot of switch combinations when you were looking to get rubs and picks and, and certain things like that. Well, now you're seeing them not necessarily to get the rub or the pick, but you're seeing them to get the split field or the pattern match or the, you know, the, the middle of the field open teams to get them to declare a little bit different with the route situations 
So now that when one and two switch and the corner and safety have to switch off, now you've got your, your best receiver on their safety. And now you get into situations where you potentially get the double move, all right? One of the ones I've been seeing is off of the double move now. Now you get back to the post corner and maybe some type of comeback on the outside, okay? I've seen the switch release to where it's corner post, all right? So I've seen it both ways. So the bottom line is you're starting to get into a situation where you're getting these switch releases because it's good against IO bracket teams. It's good against... Uh, you know, middle of the field open safety structures of teams that want to pattern match uh, the, cover, the, the, the routes that they're seeing. It's great to get the matchups that you want, but it also changes the stems that the DBs are, are used to working on. So if, if I just draw it up on this side, most of the time these DBs and drills that they do or indie work that they do, they are getting used to the stems of the receivers that they're working on, and they're doing all their drills working on the stems of the receivers, so they're doing their different pedal drills or technique or catch man or different things that they're playing, whatever their techniques are, their, you know, the trade-offs in, in, in two-read or pattern match stuff, and they're always working on the stem of their play. Well, all of a sudden when you get these switch releases, you're putting these DBs into a different stem. So all of a sudden when the one is up inside like this and the two is up outside like this, those DBs now have different stems attacking them, and they don't do as much training, individual work, everyday work, on those stems. So now you're creating new stems and then you're creating a little bit different space. So now you're going, if you want to get one on the post, by driving the corner out and making him widen for the wheel, now you're creating more leverage and room to the post. All right? So there are several different reasons and ways why you would do it. Okay, But what it's doing is it's creating the matchups that you want, getting your one on a safety. It's making things a little bit, you know, when you get when you teach your kids, and I know for us in high school, when we teach our kids how to switch off these stems, when those stems switch again, and all of a sudden this becomes this stem, but he goes there, and this becomes this stem, and he goes there, that is tough for high school kids to get. It's probably tough at the college level too, but you trade off the initial stems with two out, hey, out, 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 I work and I get one, and now all of a sudden my one goes back out to you and, and, and that two comes back into me, our team's going to try and trade that again once it's in mid-route. I would say no. Once these declare in their vertical stems, I've got mine, you've got yours, and now I've got to be higher than you, and you've got to be able to go under, and I've got to go over it to, you know, hopefully avoid that. But what you're starting to see now is teams are doing more of this. They're doing it, you know, from they're getting offenses are getting creative, and they're doing it from bunch sets. They're doing it with motion. So they got number one out here, and they're bringing them in motion in here and snapping the ball here. All right, and then bringing him there, and he comes in motion and goes back out. So the offenses are getting better with how they're doing things. They're always getting smarter. But you're starting to see these switch releases with vertical stems, and the reason I think you're seeing them, matchups that they create, space that they can create, vertical stems on DBs that aren't used to working against those vertical stems, creating a situation with DBs that they don't get a chance maybe to work enough of, in everyday drills, maybe defenses now have to work more of those releases. All right, maybe you get teams out of, uh, at times, maybe you get them out of either bracket man or uh, middle of the field open too high stuff, and you force them to go to other stuff because of those switch releases. So I think you're going to see it more and more. I think you're going to start seeing it more at the high school level. Again, can we, you know, at the high school level, I don't worry about the switch releases on offense. I think we can certainly do that in high school level. At that. What bothers me is can we protect and throw the dig ball or, you know, obviously we everybody in high school throws the post, but if it's, if it's some, type of de uh, some type of mills theory where we're going post over dig and even if we had, you know, shallow or something else, if we had, you know, this built in backside with some type of swing, uh, you know, maybe curl, whatever it is on the backside, can we throw this 14 to 16 yard in route? Can we protect it? Can we do those things? That, to me, is, is more of the issue than the vertical switch releases. I think our kids, the hardest thing I would think to teach high school kids with these vertical switches, especially, or these uh, switch releases with vertical stems, especially inside the concept of what we're doing with our splits, how to get back on
How do we get back on the landmarks we need to keep the proper spacing so the routes aren't on top of each other? Because passing becomes mostly space-induced space or, or, or trying to create space all the time. So whether it's the high, low, or the post over the dig with the shallow underneath, whatever it is, you need the proper spacing, whether it's the depth or the width. So when we go to do these things, can we recreate the width or the landmarks that we need so that when this guy pushes the post route, we make sure that it's not a, a vertical stem where he's here, here, and on the post, and now the... The two routes are either on top of each other or the spacing's not good. To me, that's the harder part to teach in high school is when you're going to do those things. Can we get the kids to understand their landmarks if they're in condensed splits to say, all right, now that we vertically switch, how do we get the right landmarks? How do we understand where we need to be? But something I think you're going to see a lot more in high school football, something we'll probably try with our offense if we want to go post over dig or post corner fork, um, trying to make it as hard as we can on the defense, all right? Uh, have a great holiday. I appreciate everything you guys do for the channel. Thank you for subscribing. Make sure you turn on your notifications so you know every time we do a video. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like or don't like the, co uh, the content. Let's us know what videos to do more of in the future. As always, any comment you leave that I can see on my end, I will respond back to. All right, so stay safe out there. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Do everything you need to do to get the world back to normal. Have a happy holiday. Have a great Christmas. I'll probably not see you until another video until after Christmas, but have a great Christmas. Happy holidays. You won't play well. Until you play fast, see you next time.